This is episode three of how to write for TV and radio. Now, if you haven't checked out the other two episodes, go and have a look at them now, episode one and episode two. And in those episodes, I discuss writing for a brief, how a lot of the music you're asked to write that comes with a brief, basically outlining what it is you want to do. And I thought a good way of demonstrating how to do that would be to write my own brief. So what I did, inspired by hearing a John Mayer interview where he kind of seemed like he was writing a brief for himself for his new album Sod Rock. I've written myself a brief for a song I want to write that's kind of in the style of one of the songs on his album. In the second episode I discuss using reference tracks so I gather together two or three tracks that sound a bit like what I'm aiming for or I ask the person that's given me the brief to give me two or three tracks that are similar to what they've got in their mind that I'm aiming for and then I take the different elements from that that I want to use. In the last episode I came up with a chord sequence based on the harmony that are in the tracks that I was referencing so using similar elements to try and make it sound a little bit like those tracks and I formalized the chord sequence by writing it out here but what I've written out is um, the chord sequence but I've written it in numbers so I can change the key because I'm starting off doing this as I discussed in the last episode in E major or C sharp minor um, so I'm starting off six minor, six minor one, so it means that I can play in any key. So six minor in E is C sharp minor because it's the sixth note of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one is the E. I've done a video on that, I'll link to that here. So the next thing to do is show you my computer screen of how I set up the session. I use Cubase, which is the uh, sequencer that I've used for years. Um, it's got loads of great features in it and it's really quick to work with. It's not probably as scalable as something like Pro Tools, which a lot of the big studios use, but for a home studio it's perfect. It's really quick and easy to use. It's got very good MIDI on it. Um, although I've got lots of other third party bits of software, but I'll show you some of that as appropriate. So let me show you the computer screen now. This is how I go about setting up the session um, to put down a demo track. Um, I've kind of set up the tracks already, it's kind of template, so I've got a drum track here with a counting, um, a MIDI piano track, which is uh, has got, let's see what instrument it's got here, just one of the native instruments, pianos, um, and then I've got two electric guitar parts, um, and I've got a preset here, I just use guitar rig and a couple of other things. Um, when I'm at this stage, I just DI the guitar, and then you know put the sound on afterwards that gives me more options um, and a bass guitar track which has got nothing on it at the moment and an acoustic guitar track which also doesn't have anything on it and I've kind of decided on a tempo 139 I don't know why but that seemed about right and the first thing I need to do is get a drum pattern that kind of feels about right so let's go into this is superior drummer 3 which is what I use all the time. Now I'm quite used to what I've got on here so I've kind of got an idea about where I'm going. Um, probably one of these maybe. That sounds about right. I don't want the um, side stick though but I think probably the pre-chorus won't be right. Oh no, that sounds alright. I think that'll do. Let's drag that there. So let's close that. Um, oh, let's actually go back. I just just a drum sound. I've got a custom image just because I think it's a more realistic sounding drum. It doesn't. Um, it's not too processed more realistic sounding kit that isn't too processed so it's just nice to play over um, so what I do I'll just duplicate that umpteen times and then with the counting I can start laying up the track okay let me show you that okay the first thing I'm going to lay down is the rhythm guitar part because that's kind of where it's all coming from where the groove and everything is coming from so I'm going to take my chord chart and don't tend to have a very organized way of doing this it tends to be a bit kind of ramshackle and throw it together so I'm just going to put my chord sheet on uh, on this seat here and hopefully you can hear that I'm just I'm just DIing the guitar let me turn that up a little bit 
I'm going to tune it up. These tracks always sound better when the guitar's in tune. Unless, of course, you're trying to copy a piece of music where the guitar's meant to be out of tune. Let me get a level here. Let me see how loud the drums are. Okay, the guitar's a bit loud. That's because I've plugged it into the wrong... Okay, that sounds about right. And I've got it in this, in the fourth position to get that kind of die straight -y sound. So, got my uh, chord chart here. Let's check I've got the right track record enabled. Let's go for it. So we listen back to that. Now I've put on an amp simulator on, on here just to kind of black faced fender sound. Just try and get that dire straightsy sound. So let's have a quick listen. It's a bit... I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. It's a little bit distorted. So that's the first guitar part. Now, I'm gonna lay down a lead guitar part as well, but I think it'll be nice to have the bass first. So let's do the bass. Now I'm gonna reveal on camera my bright yellow bass. It sounds fantastic, but you don't wanna take it out of the house because it looks a bit strange. I like to have all my instruments at hand so I can just, while I'm doing this, I can just lean over and grab whatever I need rather than have to go and get it all out. So, Let's enable the bass channel. Let's give it a go. Made a mistake, couldn't read my own writing. Let's try that again. done there's a couple of mistakes there but for this stage it's enough to get me going to move on to the next stage so I think next I'm going to do the acoustic guitar now obviously with this I'm going to need headphones and a microphone Said than done. 
Let's make sure this guitar's in tune as well. Let me check I've got the acoustic guitar. Channel about right. Here we go. Now you're not going to be able to hear this, you're going to be able to hear the acoustic guitar because I've had to turn the rest of the track off otherwise it will spill into the mic. Let's have a listen to what we've got so far. I think that sounds pretty good. Right, now I'm going to put down the lead guitar. I'm going to leave it on that same, that same strat sound. If I was doing a kind of proper um, tracking thing, I'd probably use my Cortex or something to get a proper guitar sound, or maybe even mic the amp up. But um, for this, for these purposes, and because it, it's a clean guitar sound, I'm just going to DI it for now. It just makes things simpler, and I can always replace it later. Right, here we go. Let's do the a Mark Knopfler impersonation. That was out of tune. Let's try that again. I was thinking of an intro there. No, I'm not going to do that intro. Let me go back and I'm going to do all rhythm. drop in for the chorus. go wrong with one bit. Let's just drop in for that. This chord. So I should have enough there um, to get it going. Now I'll go back to the computer, do a screenshot and show you that. I probably will put down a piano part actually. Now let me do that. I'll have to turn my back to you. But I'm going to put down a piano part just to finish this off. Let's turn the piano on. It's like Monty Python with the P90. 
pianist with his back to the camera. So I'm not naked like I would be in uh, Monty Python, fortunately for everyone watching. Okay, let's check, I've got some. Um, you get an echo on here, so I'm gonna turn the piano off on there. And what I do, to speed things up, and I didn't have to tell you this because you can't actually see my fingers at this point, but normally, because I'm not a great piano player, just to get down some quick block chords, I normally transpose it into a key that I find easier, which is another good reason for putting the chord chart with numbers rather than actual chords. So I'm gonna transpose the piano here, I'm gonna cheat. I can play in E, but I'm better in C for these purposes. Okay, let's do the piano part. Let's go back to the computer and you can have a look at what I've done. This is the session you've just seen me create, so let me just play it to you as is. So that's with nothing done to it. Now what I'd probably do just to um, slightly improve the sound, so this is the acoustic guitar. Which sounds pretty good, but I've got a preset that I have here. I think I normally search for it like this. Oh no, I don't want that one. Yes, I do. This one. Just makes it a little bit brighter. Let's bring that down. And what I'll do, I'll pan that over to one side and then the rhythm part. Bass is a got an Ampeg. I don't have to do this at this stage, but I know I'll probably use these settings later, or these amps anyway. To get the difference with and without. Shame, I quite like this solo I did at the beginning. It's, this is what I did before I remembered I wasn't supposed to be doing it. Just tidying up where I had to drop in. Now, if I was doing this properly then I'd crossfade everything but for these purposes this is enough to get me going to the next stage. The piano sounds okay. The next stage would be to um, kind of alter the drums to make sure all the accents fit, etc. But I'm not going to do that at this stage. It's literally just to get the form down. That form I can then cut and paste sections. So if I want to put an intro on, I could nick the first eight bars and paste it on the front, and then I can have that verse, bridge, chorus section. I can duplicate that. But at this stage, this, this is all I need to get to. So last thing then, let's uh, 
just have a listen to the track that I've created. I've put a little bit of mastery on because that just makes it sound nicer. It sort of splits the stereo up a bit more and just a bit more inspiring for moving on to the next stage. So let me play you what I've done here. Huh? There's a quick insight into how I'd quickly lay down the basic track for then how I can start working on the next elements, the instrumentation, the melody or lyric as I'm probably going to do on this song, although that wouldn't typically what I do for TV and radio stuff, but I think on this occasion that's going to be uh, something I'm going to do as it's part of the brief, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to um, put the hashtag on here, my sob rock, which if you search for that hashtag then you should be able to find all the other episodes so hope you enjoyed it please hit subscribe hit like leave me a comment and i'll see you on the next video